Hello everyone. Welcome into week number three of the Island Breeze Quilt Along. Um, today it's Wednesday. It's midway. We're midway through January. Do you believe it already? 2019 midway. And we are on the third week of the Quilt Along and I have to say that I'm really impressed with a lot of the progress that everybody's making. Hey Kristen, how are you? Um, if you're not in the quilting group, the Quilt Alongs with Canton Village Quilt Works, oh my gosh, I can't speak today. That's not good, because I need to. Um, if you're not in the group, there's a lot of people been posting their progress uh, as to where they are. Uh, some people posting their fabrics, posting their hourglass. Some people have gotten a little ahead, which is fabulous. Um, my friend Lisa, she posted She's actually almost done with her quilt, but it is amazing what she did to it. Um, so if you're not in the Quilt Alongs group and you haven't seen the posts, definitely go over there and request to join and I will uh, approve you to be in the group and then you can post uh, your pictures and progress along with everyone else. So today we're gonna get started on uh, the third week and this week we are going to be doing flying geese but first I want to show you so for those of you who missed last week we worked on the hourglass blocks this is my little stack of hourglass blocks that I completed um, for the island breeze quilt and remember this is the quilt we're working on the only thing you need to do to join in the quilt along um, Yes, Kristen, the weather here is delightful, by the way, today. Um, this is the quilt we're working on for the quilt along. You just have to go ahead and purchase this. And uh, then you're in. And you can actually start really at any given time because the videos live here on my Facebook page and also on my YouTube page. And I also repost them into the quilt alongs group. So they're there as well. Um, so this is the quilt. Uh, so far we've accomplished the hourglass blocks so those are all in uh, the um, group as well you will get a new PDF download in the group today uh, for homework for next week I will be uploading that after I do the video so definitely share this video because there's other people that might want to get in on this last week um, if you didn't see I did share this with you it was kind of a throwback there's my Island Breeze quilt right on the cover of Quilt Magazine. It was my very first cover girl back in June of 2012. That's how long my pattern has been out. Um, quilt Magazine no longer exists, but of course I have several copies because it was a cover girl. So that was really cool for me. And as many of you know, I am doing the, uh, my demos in the Sea Goddess fabric by Laurel Birch. From Clothworks I teamed up with them and it's going to look like this and that's the fabric that I'm working on and a lot of you have asked me by the way when the Clothworks uh, fabric will be available when the uh, Laurel Birch Sea Goddess fabric will be available I believe Clothworks will be shipping it to shops to be available sometime in February so if you're looking for the fabric I'm working on be patient it's gonna be there it's coming um, in February okay so let's get started. I am going to be showing you the flying geese method today. I'm going to show you uh, two different ways. Well, it's really the same way, but I'm going to use two different rulers just in case you don't have one. You can use the other. Um, and I am going to be moving the camera to show you uh, while I'm sewing. I'm going to recap real quick as far as the sewing goes. So hit that share button because other people are going to want to see the technique. Um, as far as my sewing machine goes, I am sewing on a Viking Husqvarna uh, Epic 980Q. I am using Aurifil 50 weight thread for piecing. Perfect stuff for piecing. Then I'm doing just a straight seam, so I have adjusted my stitch length. I don't like the default stitch length uh, of 2.5. Most machines are that way. I like a 2.5 zero stitch length it's a little bit uh, stronger stitch length so I've adjusted mine to 2.0 I have a quarter inch foot on my machine um, it's uh, on the Viking their snap-off foot again they have uh, 
the, the edge of the foot here is exactly a quarter inch. And um, this requires me, I don't have to move the needle over. Now, the reason why I like using the quarter inch foot um, better than having to move the needle over is because I use a single hole throat plate too. So when you have that single needle throat plate, there's just one little hole in the throat plate. So you can't move that needle over to adjust your uh, stitch width. So you don't wanna, you, you can't because there's only the hole. If you're using a zigzag plate, you can move the needle, but I choose not to because you know whenever, sometimes you have that fabric that goes, it goes down into the throat uh, of the machine, it kind of gets sucked down in there by the walking feet. Um, a lot of the times it's because you're putting the edge or like a, a tip of a triangle or in, in this case, the method we're gonna be doing today, it's very possible you could do that. And when you have that zigzag hole there, you have way more room for it to go down. Uh, so I ch change out my throw plate to a single hole. I'm just doing a straight stitch. I use a single hole and a quarter inch foot. That's your best bet, okay? So just warning you ahead of time too, I also have one extra thing here today and you can't see him quite right now. I have Quilt Inspector number one. He's laying here sleeping. He may wake up during the broadcast and may have a look-see, so um, I can't guarantee anything, but just so you know, he is here helping me out today. So let's get started, okay? Who wants to learn how to make some flying geese? It's a very efficient way. Some of you may already know this way, uh, some of you, this might be your first time watching, so pay close attention. I did a lot of step outs, so we're gonna do a little bit of sewing, but there's gonna be a lot of step outs too, so really cool. So what you're gonna need for today is you're gonna need the uh, six different fabrics for that you had cut out. These are your geese fabrics, okay? And the measurements uh, for those are in the pattern, and you had to cut 36 total, okay? Of those and you're also going to need your 140 and they would by the way they would have been in your pattern categorized as the pink fabrics okay and in my in this case I'm using a variety of pinks and purples okay so in the pattern I describe these squares as your light blue because the cover sheet is the pinkies and light blue background so you're gonna have 140 for these. So you gotta gather these up. The first thing you're gonna do, the first thing you're gonna do with these is you are gonna do similar to what we did last time. Is If you can see that, can you see, I marked a diagonal line on the wrong side of the background fabric squares, okay? And I did it to every single one. So you have to do that to all 144 doesn't take that long. You could do it while you're watching TV um, or, you know, whatever. It's just kind of busy work. So you got to mark those, okay? The first step that we're going to do, and I'm actually going to turn the camera down uh, so you can see. I have some step outs too, so I'll show you those as well. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take one of your geese fabrics, okay, and you're going to take two of the background squares and you're going to line them up on the diagonal like so. Now, what I want you to see here is, and this is super important, and I'm gonna show you in the step out too. When I put these on here, you could still see a little bit of that geese fabric poking out behind the background fabric, okay? That's important. Then what you wanna do is you want to take, I like to keep these in place, so this is also I consider busy work, um, which you can also do this while you're sitting watching TV or maybe sitting outside enjoying the sun, um, whatever you wanna do. I pin on either side of that line, so I'm gonna hold this up in a second so you can see it a little better. And I have two little step outs here, so you can see. And then we're gonna do some chain piecing, okay? So now, you're gonna do this 
to all of your geese fabric. You're just going to put the background fabrics down, pin just like I did. So now you can see, so I want to show you, see how you can see that background fabric a little bit around the edge. You, that's super important because that gives you just a little bit extra fabric. So when we get to the geese part, you're actually going to, it'll actually give you more room to trim down. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay. You're going to do, <coughs> excuse me, all 36 of the geese fabrics with, they each get two of the background fabrics. You're going to pin them together and then you're going to chain piece. So I have two set up here because I did a step out too. I'm going to show you how to chain piece these two. It's really super simple. So I'm going to bring you over here and you might even get to see quilt inspector number one. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and all I'm going to do is I want to make sure that my, you and by, by the way, if you have needle down, go ahead and put it in needle down position. Um, you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew a quarter inch away from the line that you drew on those background squares. Okay. Then because you're chain piecing, you're just going to keep feeding in the other squares. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to feed in this square. And then when I get, you know, to the end of my 36, yes, it's, it's a lot to chain piece, but I want to tell you what, it's very efficient. So once you get done, you're good to go. Let me turn on my iron here too, just so it's nice and warmed up for us. So when I get to the end of my 36, okay, so when I'm done here, all I'm going to do is take this out, my row of 36, turn it around, and I'm going to sew a quarter inch away on the other side of the line, okay? That's important. We need to get both of those sides sewn down, okay? And you just continue on until you get all 36 complete. And if you're a super speed sewer, go ahead, put that pedal to the metal, get her done, right? Okay, once it's done, you're gonna go ahead and cut the threads. I'm gonna clip the little ones that are hanging here because I just don't like the little threads. And then you're gonna clip them apart, okay? So now, I'm gonna turn you back over here so you can kind of see. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take the pins out. And what I like to do is, and I actually have a, another step out here too. It's a, it's a different color. And you're gonna take all these pins back out, put them away. And in my case, I have to put them in a tin because quilt inspector number one likes pins. Um, here's another step out where I show it's done so you can see the um, stitches on both sides. The pins are there. We're going to take the pins out. Okay. And so I did a bunch of step outs. So now what we're going to do now is what I like to do before we do anything else is I like to set the seam. Oops. I think I just dropped a pin. Okay. Let me close this up. So now I like to set the seam. So I'm going to take it over here to my iron. And all I'm going to do is just press it nice and flat. So I'm not really doing much, but it presses it nice and flat. And I also like to kind of do it on top of one another. I mean, you don't want to do a whole big stack, but it makes that seam nice and flat. So if anything kind of puckered along the way, um, it just it just keeps it laying flat. So I have these three plus I have another one that I also did here, which was pressed. So the next step, once you've got this the um, seam sewn down the side and the line on the 
the, the line in the middle there, what we're going to do next is we are going to go ahead and cut these apart on that line. So you're just going to take your ruler, I'm going to move these just slightly out of the way so I have a little more room. So hopefully you can see all this and I'm going to show you, you're going to take your ruler, lay it on that line and cut them apart. Okay, so now you have units that look like this. Okay, so you're going to have two of those that look like this. Now I have a step out also of the purple that looks like that. Okay, so let me show you one more time. You're just going to lay it on the line that you drew and you automatically get that quarter inch. So you have two more of these and I'm just going to go ahead and cut these last two. Might as well, right? It doesn't take long. I'm going to cut that right on that line. Okay. You see where I'm going with this, right? So by the way, when you're putting those these squares on here, and I don't know if I said this, but they are going right sides together, okay? So the right side of the background fabric is going right sides to that um, geese fabric. So just in case I miss saying that, I want you to know we're sewing right sides together. All right, so now, the next step after you've cut all of your geese and backgrounds apart is we have to press these, okay? They've got to be pressed to, to the side of the background fabric. So here's what I did here is I pressed it, and I call this my little heart unit. See, it looks like a little heart, doesn't that? So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to take you over here. I'm going to show you how I press it you can see I'm sorry if it's like shaking a little bit so you're just gonna press and then all I do is I take it and I press open and open okay so when I say open I'm opening up the the um, unit and then what I like to do and I showed this last week I like to put the next one the seam right on there so you're kind of getting a double press on that one that was um, below, and you're doing the same exact thing. So you're getting a nice, crisp press, okay? So it's nice and crisp and clean, okay? You've got the heart. See how pretty that is, right? So now, okay, next step, I'm going to put these aside, and I'll work on those later. Now what we want to do is after we've got our stack of hearts, okay, we've got a couple hearts here, well four to be exact, we want to go ahead and take our other squares, because remember we had 144 of these, so now we're going to use the other half. Now this is super important. I'm going to pin these again and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. We want to take that diagonal line again. And we want to lay it back into that corner on your geese fabric. And again, we're scooching it off a little bit so you can see a little bit of that geese fabric. I'm going to go ahead and take my pins and I'm going to pin on either side of that line. Okay, so it looks like this. So if you look at this now, this diagonal line, it goes straight through the middle of the heart there and it's pinned in place. So let me do one more. Let me show you here. I'm going to take another one and I'm going to put it on that diagonal. And again, I'm leaving a little space on either side of that background fabric so I can see that background fabric. You want to see a little bit of that. Okay. I'll hold it up again for you. pinning on either side. Now I'm going to set these two aside. So here is that one and you can see again there's that fabric on the other side and it's going through. Now I did two more of them in the other color in one of the other colorways. So I have this and this. Okay so I have two more. So now what we're going to do is we're again going to chain piece these. So you're doing this to, in your, your entire um, your all of your 
squares at the same time because you're going to just chain piece. Now let me take you back over here, okay, and we are going to go ahead and do some more chain piecing. So I think I've got you there. And so what we're going to do, I'm going to feed these through, and it's basically the same thing as we did before. You're going to go ahead and you're going to sew a quarter inch on either side. You're going to come through. And I like to put the pedal to, to the metal. You should have seen me this morning. I was prepping stuff, and I was putting the pedal to the metal. Who likes to do that? I do. You get, especially when you're chain piecing, it's so, so efficient. Um, so you can make your machine go as fast as you like. Or if you're just on a slow Sunday country drive, that's fine too, because sometimes I find sewing very mesmerizing and relaxing and sometimes that's all I want to do is that slow Sunday country drive, right? So when you're done with that, bringing it through, up, oh, quilt inspector number one just woke up, oh, but he's putting his head back down. Okay, so now we're going to come down the other side, just like we did that on the first round, right? So we're coming around the other side sewing on the other side of that uh, line that you drew. Now, if you have a dark fabric, like a dark background fabric, make sure you use a, um, a marking implement that will show, like you might want to use like white chalk pencil, um, so that the white will show. On this, it was pretty easy. I just used a regular old pencil, because um, I can see the line very well, because the background colors are like a creamy, color so it was very easy to see for me anyway there we go okay and we're almost done coming through now see if I had all my all mine prepped and ready I would just go ahead and put them all through and that's what I would recommend you do in fact if you look in the quilt alongs with um, Canton Village Quilt Works group Lisa Slinsky, she posted a picture of her um, chain piecing going on. She had some wonderful uh, photo shots of her chain piecing and how she lined everything up and just got them going, which was fantastic. Okay, so let's go back around here. And the next thing you're going to see is uh, quilt inspector number one is wide awake. So. We've got those sewn, but we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to remove the pins, okay? Same thing, I'm removing all the pins, and then I want to give these a quick little press so they lay flat, okay? And then I have, oops, let me get that pin out of there. Then I have two more that I prepped that were ready to go with the, the seam allowances already sewn. And then we are going to press, I'll bring you over here to the pressing, okay? And so we're just gonna lay this down and simply all it's as simple as this, just putting the iron down on it and making it lay light, nice and flat. And that's it, that's all I'm doing. Oop. It would be nice if my iron was a little bit hotter, so I just press that. So you're just pressing them nice and flat so that when we go cut this apart, they are, uh, you just get a, a really crisp flying geese. So you're going to see some magic happen here in a minute, okay? So from that one big square, no, no, quilt inspector number one. He's looking, no, no, quilt inspector number one. No, no, he wants to eat my thread and I can't let him eat the thread. So he's gonna have to go. No, no, uh-uh. I'm sorry, everybody. I just gotta make sure that he doesn't go after my thread because that's not good for a kitty's belly. No, and he's eyeing it up. So we're just pressing, okay? So now that we've got those pressed, now, what we're going to do, and I have two more that are pressed here because I did some prep work ahead of time. So now what we're going to do is on that line again, we are going to cut these apart. And there's some magic that happens here. Okay, 
little quilt inspector number one. No, no, no. He's eyeing up my thread. He is eyeing up that thread. He is, he is very naughty today. So I'm going to go ahead, lay the ruler down, cut them in half. No, no. Quilt inspector. So you're going to get two halves like this. Okay. So let me show you again. I'm going to cut two more in half. And you get these two halves. So from one square, one square, one, I, I should say, one flying geese square, you are going to produce four flying geese, okay? So you have two and two, but this all came from one flying geese background and four background squares. Okay, so there's always one flying geese background, four little squares to them. Okay, so now once we have them in this form cut apart, and I have two more here as well that I had prepped ahead of time, what we're going to do is now we need to press these, and we need to press this open. So I'm going to only do one pile of these because I think you'll get the picture, so I'm going to show you how to press these. So you're going to take take this and you're going to give it a press and then you're going to go press it open and you see your flying geese but we're not done here yet because we need to trim these down remember I said last time that when you um, when I write my patterns I try and, and write them so that you have extra fabric so that you always are trimming down so it'll always be the correct size afterwards. Because if you try to make them exact from the beginning, you're gonna end up probably not exact because there's always a little bit of give, okay? And whether you're sewing an exact quarter inch seam or not, there's always some kind of um, variable in there that might not make them quite right, okay? So now, here's, whoops. Ooh, I am so sorry. You just fell over. <laughs> um, whoops. Are you all there still? I hope so. Um, anyway, so I've got the geese now, but there are two rulers that I want to show you, okay? One of my favorite ones for flying geese is the wing clipper. De Deb Tucker is a good friend of mine, and she has some awesome tools and her wing clipper is fabulous because you can use this to create so many different size geese. So it goes, this one, this one um, does 10 different size geese. Now we're going to use it for my size. I, when I wrote the pattern, I, I did it around um, the size I wanted. But if you don't have the wing clipper, which I do highly recommend, especially if you make a lot of flying geese, you can use... The creative grids ruler that I have here for my size geese this works so this is the um, 12 and a half by six and a half inch one and it has the appropriate um, diagonal lines uh, the 45 degree lines that you need to do this so I'm going to show you first with the creative grids ruler and then I'm going to show you with Deb Tucker's ruler okay so you're going to take your geese, I'm going to tilt you down just a little bit more, okay? So you're going to take your geese and you're going to have it facing towards you. Now, in this ruler, this has this the 45 degree angles like so. You want to place that um, where they cross right in the V. So it should line up there and what the cool thing is that this height here is three and a half inches and the length is six and a half inches so we are it's it this is perfect for this size geese now i don't know that it will work on any other size geese so we're going to go ahead and now trim the right side and the top okay and there's not a lot we're not wasting a lot of fabric but you are getting going to get a perfect trim down but we haven't trimmed the other side yet so you've got that crosshairs there, and it crosses right into where the V is, and those 45-degree angles line up 
with your goose. Now we're going to give it a quarter turn around. And what we're going to line up here is the six and a half inch line and the three and a half with the three and a half inch where it says three and a half inches here. We're going to line the six and a half inch up with the left side and the three where it says where it says three and a half inches. We're going to line that up with the bottom edge and it leaves us a little bit on the right side again to trim and on the top to trim. Okay, so you can see where it's not a whole lot that you're trimming off, okay? And then you have a perfect, perfect flying geese. So let me show you one more time with this ruler and then I'm gonna show you on the wing clipper. That's one of my finished ones. Let me show you here. Again, again I have the point of the geese facing me, okay? Let me pull it back this way a little bit. And then I'm gonna take that 40, those two 45 degree angles that are in here, and I'm gonna lay it right there in the V where it crosses in the V. And it le and the those angles are right there in the seam. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim the right side and the top. Okay. And then I'm gonna give it that quarter turn. And I'm gonna line up my six where it says six and a half inches on that side, the left side, and I'm gonna line up the line at the bottom where it says three and a half inches with the bottom of the geese, and I'm gonna trim on the right side and the top. Okay, so you're just taking ever so little off and you end up with that beautiful goose okay now i'm going to show you with the wing clipper so let's set that aside and i'm going to show you how the wing clipper works similar way but if you look at the wing clipper you have so many different options as far as size geese that you're making and deb gives you um, really good instructions in here as to what size um what size square you need to start with as far as your geese and what size square you need to start with for your backgrounds. So let me show you here. We're gonna start the same exact way. We're gonna have the point of the geese at towards you, okay? And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take this and lay it down on here. And we're at the, we want the finished size of this excuse me, this finished size to be six and a half by three and a half. So that's what we're lining it up with. And lo and behold, there are those crosshairs again, and they fall right in here on the seam line and the cross hatch falls right in there on that V. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim the right side and the top. We're gonna give it that turn. And then what happens here is when you align where it says six and a half and three and a half, there is a crosshairs that fits right in that top where that V is. So then you're trimming off a little bit on the top or a little bit on the side and a little bit on the top, okay? To get, to get that perfect goose. And what happens is if you can see here, there's a perfect quarter inch here. So when you go ahead and sew your geese together, you're not gonna clip off uh, the tip of that goose. So let me show you again one more time. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and lay it down so that the six and a half inch line is on this side, three and a half is on this side, but more what we need to look at is this, that line here, oops, sorry, that line here falls in the seam allowance and seam allowance there and that crosshairs falls here, then you can go ahead and trim that side, trim the top, and then you can turn it around and line up that six and a half inch, let me pull it back a little bit, I hope you're seeing everything, pull it back just a little bit, uh, the six and a half inch and the three and a half inch line and that little crosshairs falls right in that tip. And you're gonna trim off the right side and the top. 
Oops, didn't quite make it through on that there. And now you've got that perfect flying geese. So, what you need to do for next week, I'm going to bring the camera back up. Actually, you know what, I'm not going to bring it up just yet. So you can go ahead, once you're done with all your geese next week, you can kind of pair up what you want, kind of like pick a pair, and you can pair them up. You don't need to sew anything together here just yet because I'm going to show you some tips and techniques next week to get these sewn together. Plus, um, we're going to be talking about sewing these together. So don't just make your geese um, for next week. So have them all ready. So let's go ahead and turn you back up so you can see my ugly mug again. There we go. So here I am back and quilt inspector number one is gone. He left. He didn't like me saying don't touch the thread. <laughs> so he left. But anyway, so that's today's tutorial for the quilt along. So your job for next week is to go ahead and mark up all those background squares, pair them up with your flying geese squares, then sew them together and make them into geese. It's a lot of fun. Follow the technique that I just showed you. If uh, It's in the pattern, so it is there in the pattern for you to see. Um, but definitely you can rewind the video because I am going to be posting it here on my Facebook page. I will also put above me a link for Deb's wing clipper. I don't sell them on my site, um, but she does. So I will put a link to her site where you can go ahead and purchase the wing clipper because it's a phenomenal ruler if you, if you want it. But if you don't have it, like I said, the Creative Grids ruler that I use, the six and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler, Creative Grids ruler, is gonna be the one for you, for you to use for this particular size. So that's important to know, okay? So go ahead, in the, in the um, Quilt Alongs with uh, Canton Village Quilt Works Facebook group, go ahead and you're going to be able to go in there and download the PDF that shows your homework for next week. If you're just joining me now, welcome in. Go back and watch the first few videos and you can hop in on this Quilt Along at any time you want. That is the best part of it. And please, please post your questions and post your progress. Um, everything posted in the group because everybody really kind of wants to see what you're making and what you're doing. I will be posting more of my geese in there later. So until next time, happy quilting. I can't wait to see what all your geese look like. It's going to be great. Have a fantastic rest of your week, everyone, and thanks for stopping in. Bye-bye.